So good afternoon, everybody, and special thanks to Chair and Business World for organizing this meeting. Rabindranath Tagore, who said, the finest of education essentially should not only give a lot of information, but make each one of us in harmony with our surroundings. Industrial Revolution, we were caught unaware, and we were busy writing poetries. We are talking about higher education today, but we can never achieve the pinnacle unless we have a very strong foundation. I'm talking about or referring to the well-accepted philosophy that growth must be pyramidal or aping the shape of a mountain. So I personally believe while we talk of higher education, the country cannot miss the fact that our primary education should be compulsory and not only primary, up to a certain level, education should be must for each and every one. We spend less than 4% on education. We spend little over 1% on higher education. If you compare these numbers with the large, the big powers of the world, who are knowledge powers, not necessarily wealth powers, we certainly get the answer as to why. Many a times, we get compared with the biggest institutions, the most famous institutions in the world, and pertinent questions are raised as to why IIT X is not among the first 100 top ranking institutions in the world. There are many, many answers which I can put forward in our, in our defense, but the most important thing is, if we simply apply one single parameter, publication per dollar, student per dollar, we stand tall. We still stand tall. What we don't understand is that when you compare, you must compare on a level playing ground, which we haven't created as yet. So there's a long way to go. There's a long way to go. And I personally feel that we have reasons to be proud about many, many things. There's no reason to be despondent. If, we should, if, if at all we should, we should feel bad, we must feel bad about the fact that we haven't been able to implement all that we have talked about. There's a huge gap between what we talk, what we propose, and what we end up, what we implement. And we cannot implement, or we have failed to implement many of our brightest thoughts is because we lack in discipline, we lack in regimentation, and we lack in willpower. The finest of the students come to IITs. The success rate is about one or two percent. Only one or two in 100 gets into the undergraduate education in IITs. The same for postgraduate education is, would be slightly higher, maybe about five or 10 percent, but still is very, very difficult to get into the top institutions in the country for higher education. While we think of all these, one important point is that why are we failing to uh, retain the best of our minds within the country and willing to serve for our own cause. And one big reason, other than the employment and other factors that one may put forward, is that is our education comparable at the tertiary level in terms of opportunities that we can give, comparable to the best in the world? One needs a bit of soul searching in that. And the only way we can make things comparable is when we truly bring in research in a big way into such higher education platform. Now, again, a simple fundamental question, what's the difference between research and experiment? When we, when we take a student to a laboratory and ask him to perform an experiment, he or she knows exactly what the final result would be. So that's a routine experiment. Research is something when you are searching for an unknown. You're trying to unravel something new which no one knows before. If you look around, the number of publications published around the globe would be in millions. Does it mean that every single paper, all they talk about, every word is new? Obviously not. In a paper which is published, let's say, running up to about 20 pages, would have at least one sentence which is completely new. That's knowledge generation. So this is what we need to understand. 
knowledge or wisdom doesn't come uh, uh, overnight. It has stages and steps. First, you collect data. You collect information. You make trials. Then you develop knowledge. And when you collate knowledges, you reach the ultimate stage of wisdom. It goes in stages. So one thing which I always keep reminding to my students is that life is a long walk with many miles and milestones. This is true for each one of us. We have to set our target well. We have to have good global benchmarking. And then we should approach together. And while we do that, research is so important that we can prove ourselves to be different and better than the rest. And this is a continuous process. It doesn't happen overnight. So I'm glad that business world thought of this particular topic. And I personally feel that the tertiary level of education in India is well empowered to implement the research ideas or, or research uh, and innovation in our curriculum. What we possibly need is a bit of uh, willpower to implement what we talk. Now, in IIT system, it's fairly easy. And that's exactly what we are trying to do. For example, at IIT Kanpur, uh, if you ask me, I would say our biggest challenge today is not recruitment of good faculty. It is one of the biggest challenges, but not the topmost. The topmost is we are more than 54 years in existence. The infrastructure is inadequate, outdated. We need large investment in toning up the investment, toning up the infrastructure, starting from classrooms to the finest of the equipments and instruments. Getting good faculty, retaining them is the next biggest challenge. Motivating the students to take up very challenging problems is the next. While we try to do all this, we must realize that unless you have a good ecosystem, you cannot sustain. You can plan, talk, even implement, but you cannot sustain. To be able to sustain, I would just raise one point which I hope all of you would agree, that if you compare India with US, there's one cadre which doesn't exist in India, but exists in US. And in my opinion, US is US today is because of that very cadre, not so much about so much for the teachers or the students, but a cadre in between, which is called postdoctoral cadre. In India, at the moment, we produce about 18 to 20,000 PhDs per year altogether. Engineering would be about one tenth of that, about two to 3,000. A country like China produces more than 10,000 per year, alone in engineering. Now, when you produce so many engineering uh, students, what do they do? They'd, all of them cannot be absorbed for teaching or research immediately with a permanent job. And in India, everything has to be permanent. Knowing fully well, there's nothing called permanent in this world. So we have to create a very dynamic system whereby this trained manpower can be employed for improving the, the knowledge generation system, the ecosystem. I also would like to say that this country, in terms of engineering technology, lacks in another very important factor, which is manufacturing sector. The largest uh, proportion of population that is engaged in a single uh, uh, particular profession is agriculture, more than 50%. But that contributes to the, globe, the national economy to less than 10%. Hardly about 15 or 16% of the, of the uh, uh, manpower who are uh, educated with tertiary education, they contribute to more than 50%. I'm talking about the IT sector, service sector. They contribute to more than 50% of the economy of the country. So there's a huge dichotomy. Another very strange fact, a strange fact is that the contribution from the manufacturing sector in India towards our GDP is about 15 to 17%. If you compare ourselves even with, not necessarily with China, but even with countries like Israel or uh, uh, Sweden, very small countries, their contribution is over 40%. That manufacturing sector needs to be strengthened in the country. And that can very well happen when the technological universities 
try to set up certain mega projects with a very ambition, very big ambition in mind, so that we start, first of all, to learn to work together. Generally, in higher education, everything is self-driven. But time has come when we have to put our hands together, find a synergy, and then plan something very big, which in my, my word can be called a mega project. And in such mega project, we need partners undone. We need partners from all sectors, not just an educational institution, but from industry, from R&D labs, even the government agencies. Once we start doing that, then even if we cannot deliver a complete product, in, in between, we certainly would be developing many more ancillaries, which eventually can lead to employment generation and add to the wealth of the nation. Thank you very much.